Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeannie Ye, and I'm currently an incoming PhD student at the University of Southern California. And today I'm going to talk about susceptibility to unreliable information sources on social media. And uh, this is a joint work with Luca Luceri, Julie Jiang, and Emilio Ferrara. First of all, uh, what is susceptibility? Susceptibility is a key concept of our research. And in biological terms, uh, when we get in contact with a virus, susceptibility means the likelihood of us being effect infected by that virus. And on social media, information is like this virus. We get exposed to a lot of information and then we choose whether or not we adopt or share that kind of information. Susceptibility to misinformation has been a key uh, research area for social media research, and those current research can fall within these three research questions. Some research uh, explores why people trust unreliable content, and research has found that the re repeated exposure, confirmation bias, peer influence, and emotional valence all positively contribute to people trusting unreliable content. And the second question is who is most vulnerable to misinformation? Studies have found that certain demographics and right-leaning individuals as well as conspiracy theory believers will be more susceptible to this misinformation. And also there are social uh, diffusion and network studies about uh, exploring how falsehoods spread on social media. And we have found that face, fake news travel faster, deeper, and also broader than true news. However, this is only on a network diffusion level, but what is unknown here is the individual level of the adoption of information. What is the difference between the adoption of truthful information versus falsehoods? For example, I am presented with a piece of high credibility information versus a piece of low credibility in information. Is there a higher probability that, that, that I adopt this low credibility information? And that is exactly what our research is um, looking into. We uh, leverage these two large-scale Twitter data sets covering politics and public health discussions during the first half of 2020. And the first data set is about US election, and the second data set is uh, COVID-19. On both these data sets are collected by the Twitter streaming API. And these data sets covers um, three, you can see 200 million to 300 million tweets. And those data sets contains like uh, 14 million users and 35 million users respectively. Let me walk you through our problem definition. First of all, uh, the susceptibility concept in our research is defined as the user's likelihood to adopt content they are, give, they are exposed to. So this is like a probability of adoption given exposure to certain content. And uh, there, are the there are the concepts of adoption and exposure. So here in our study, we define adoption as sharing an information source via an URL embedded in a tweet. And this tweet can um, be an original tweet, a retweet, or a quoted tweet. For example, if one user share a URL from NewYorkTimes.com, and we will consider the NewYorkTimes.com as the information source of that URL, and we consider that the user adopts NewYorkTimes.com at that specific post. It is uh, worth noting that adoption here only means people is actively de deciding to disseminate a piece of information on social media. However, that does not mean that people actually agree with that, trust that, or believe in that. So there's a little caveat of the uh, concept of adoption here. And also, we, ad uh, we approximate ex exposure by using people's interaction in social networks. Uh, an, intuitive, uh, an intuition of exposure might be to evaluate what people actually see on social media. However, in the real case, this kind of user behavioral data is very hard to get from APIs. And also from APIs, we, are, uh, we cannot get the follower and follow uh, relationship in our data sets. So um, as an approximation, we use interaction between users to, as a um, as a proxy for exposure. For example, if A retweet quote or reply to user B, and then we suppose that A is exposed to B's tweets. So note that this exposure is like an upper bound of uh, of the evaluation of what, what contents that a user is ex ex exposed to. 
And then I need to emphasize that we focus on evaluating susceptibility to different kinds of information sources. And these are low credibility information sources and high credibility, sorry, low credibility and high credibility information sources. And how we're getting the credibility of information sources, we leverage the ratings of this fact check organization called Media Bias Fact Check and BFC. And they are giving like specific numeric scores for the credibility of information sources as well as a type, uh, a general uh, type for the credibility of sources. So we identified over 1,400 low credibility sources such as the Gateway Pundit and Britbar.com and nearly 2,000 high credibility information sources like the uh, New York Times.com and Wall Street Journal. This is, an, this is an example of how we are calculating the exposures and adoptions of one user. For example, in our data set, we find that um, user A posted this Britbar.com, which is a low credibility information source, on March the 1st, 2020. And we will consider that at this time, user A adopted the uh, Britbar.com for the first time. So we are only counting the exposures before the, uh, the first time of adoption. And in our data sets, we can see that user A retweet and quote user B and user C, meaning that they have interactions with user B and user C. So we will consider, as according to our exposure definition, that user A is exposed to user B and user C's tweets. And user B and user C posted Britbar.com like two times and four times separately. So uh, we will, uh, we will see that the number of exposures before user A adopt this Britbar.com is six times. And uh, it is also worth noting that user A can be exposed to tweets and not adopting them. So that will, that will be accounted as n not an adoption, but that will count it into the exposure. Um, so our first research question asks, how does the number of exposures to a content, to an information source, affect its adoption? So here we are plotting the uh, given number of exposures. We are pl plotting the probability of adoption given that number of exposures in all cases in our data sets across all populations and users. Here is, this is an intuitive uh, so, uh, conclusion that the adoption likelihood increases with the uh, increase of the exposure frequency. However, what is um, more interesting is that we also divided these uh, different information sources into high credibility and low credibility sources. And we have found that the given a specific number of exposure, low credibility sources are more likely to be adopted on the same exposure. And uh, But one might say that there are a lot of confounding factors in this result. For example, uh, there are a lot of partisan users in this data set, ex especially in the uh, COVID, uh, sorry, in the elections data set. And um, those partisan users may cluster within the network and they have a lot of share sharing of misinformation and that might bias and skew our results. So uh, we do another robustness check about removing the partisan users in our data set. We infer the political leaning of each target user by the weighted average media bias ratings from the sources they share. For example, the MBSC also give a media bias whether this media is like uh, left leaning or right leaning and that is a new numeric score and we count the weighted average of all users and so that we get the media leanings of all users. Then we uh, try to eliminate the top 10%, top 20% and the top 30% uh, partisan users in our data set, and we can find that the probability of adopting low credibility contents is still significantly higher than the probability of adopting high uh, uh, information sources, which means that that may not be uh, solely due to the partisan bias, but also, uh, but in, instead a uh, kind of a general pattern within the general population. And our second research question asks that given an exposure of adoption, how does the credibility of the source influence the number of exposures needed for adoption? For each adopted source, we uh, divide those expo the exposures needed for that source into like three tercels, which is the top, medium, and bottom 33% of all exposures. And then we are mapping the source credibility score not by the 
dichotomy of low and high credibility, but rather into a continuum of zero to one. Zero means very low credibility sources, and one means very high credibility sources. And each point in this uh, simplex plot um, denotes one information source. And we can see that the low exposure, medium exposure, and the high exposure percentages sum up to one. What is interesting about this result is that we can see that very dark and very, sorry, very dark uh, red and blue dots are uh, clustered on the right, uh, on the left bottom side of the simplex, meaning that these sources are adopted mostly on low exposure levels rather than medium exposure levels and high exposure levels. So our result for this is that both extremely low and high credibility sources may require like fewer exposures for adoption. But um, we in our paper we just does not uh, we do not explicitly say the reason for that, but uh, there might be some reason according to previous research that low credibility sources are much more emotional effective and uh, much more novel and bizarre than high credibility sources. And some people adopting high credibility sources might be uh, valuing the accuracy and credibility of that source and seeking authoritative opinions. For example, you can see that the how you, White House and the uh, CDC, which is the, the Disease Con Control Center, and uh, uh, in, in this plot, see, um, indicating that people, some, there are some people valuing the accuracy of these kind of information sources and thus uh, um, adopt these sources quicker than other sources. Our third research question asks, um, on the individual level, how does the credibility of exposure affect the credibility of adoption? So we um, found that um, there, this is a correlation plot between individuals exposure credibility versus uh, adoption credibility. And we can see that there's a concentration on uh, the diagonal on, on the medium and the upper level of this plot, meaning that most people should, uh, have uh, relatively high adoption credibility and exposure credibility. But there's also a significant number of people on the middle of the plot, meaning that their adoption and exposure credibility is not very high. And these are highly correlated. And we further uh, explore this uh, result um, based on how many low and high credibility exposures precedes low and high credibility adoptions. And we can find that the uh, given you have adopted a low credibility source, the probability that you are exposed to low credibility sources before this adoption is remarkably uh, higher than the probability that you uh, are exposed to a high credibility sources before this adoption. And the same is vice versa for the high credibility sources. So our result for this is that, uh, first of all, adoption credibility is kind of driven by exposure credibility and low high, low or high credibility exposure precedes low or high credibility adoption. Our results also offer some implications for uh, mitigating information on social media as well as promoting the uh, protecting vulnerable populations for social good. First of all, we find that uh, adoption likelihood increases with exposure frequency and um, for this finding, we need to like reduce the, the people's exposure to low credibility content. For example, uh, like shadow banning in uh, unreliable content. And, and secondly, we found that uh, low credibility sources take fewer exposures to be adopted. So we perhaps need to shift people's attention to accuracy and increase the transparency about source credibility on social media. For example, like displaying like new source trustworthiness trustworthiness rating. And our last finding might be. Uh, adoption credibility is driven, some kind of driven by uh, exposure credibility. So platforms can design interventions to like promote high credibility sources like cross-source fact checking, which we already have in Twitter. So uh, last but not least, I would like to say thank you to all of my co-authors and uh, I'm open to questions. This is the code for the full paper. <laughs>